cradled within the arms of the rivers Ganges and Brahmaputra to the south, and the mysterious plateau of Tibet to the north, majestically stands the mightiest mountain range on the face of the earth, the Himalaya. This is the story of an expedition to this rugged barrier, not to assault on its windswept towering heights, but to find and study plant life, which had heretofore been unknown or inaccessible. This is the story of that mission, of how a small group of people found themselves in pursuit of a crude and primitive civilization, which once only existed as a figment of the imagination. study of the region, the first leg of the expedition took me to Bombay, India. Shekhar, the last settlement before entering the wilderness of rock and ice. There I selected ten Sherpa natives to serve as porters. My name is Parrish, Dr. Frank Parrish. By profession, I am a botanist working for the Cory Foundation. To record the visual log of our expedition, I engaged Peter Wells, well qualified to serve as a photographer. As our guide, I hired Subra, the only English-speaking Sherpa acquainted with the terrain. Only the most essential equipment was selected and distributed among the members of our party. All preparations completed and everything on schedule. At noon on June 14th, we set out to strike at the mountain. Supra's young wife, Tala, and his brother, Leva, accompanied us to the foot of the mountains before saying goodbye. became more rugged and difficult. Wells and I kept up with the Sherpas, who were much like human mules under the weight of our heavy supplies. We continued on to a height of 10,000 feet above sea level, where I wanted to commence my work. At last on the day, we reached the plateau region. Zubra, have your men pitch the tents. Tento hatte kode pagzu. You may try to go on. Up to this point, having established only temporary camps, everyone was eager for our first hot meal. Camp one was now well established. 
except for a variety of common moss and crucifer flower, we found little of interest. But we decided to comb the area more thoroughly for the next few days. How about the shot? No, thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Doctor. Everything all right? Can't bother say that. Everything's fine, Subra, thank you. Alcohol good? Fine. Yeah, help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. Well, I'm no doctor. Want anything? No, thank you, Subra. I'll see you later. I fix nice hot supper. A wonderful tonic. Warms up the gizzards. Keep that up and you'll pickle your gizzard. Wells, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't hand out that stuff to any of the men and don't drink in their presence, understand? Okay. Suits me. Shekhar, come in. Come in, Shekhar. This is Dr. Parrish. This is Shekhar. Yes, Doctor. Let me speak to Inspector Karma, please. We'll get Inspector Karma. That night, all seemed well in the town of Shekhar. Mr. Doctor. Oh, Subra, what is it? Yeti. Yeti, uh, Mr. Doctor. Huh? Yeti. What's all the noise? My brother, Riva. He come with four men. They followed us all the way up here. What do they want? Brother say, Yeti steal my woman, Tara. We leave. Who after Yeti? Yeti, Yeti, what is this? Yeti, creature of snow. Snow giant. Oh, you mean the abominable snowman, the phantom of the Himalayas, marauder of women. <laughs> we go after Hedy. Find him. Oh, the newspapers and magazines have carried stories about it from time to time, but... Yeah, the sheriffs have built this creature into a horror story. This isn't a hunting party. Thousands of dollars have been spent to finance this expedition, and he wants to chase a legend. <laughs> Mr. Doctor, yet you reason, Mr. Doctor. No one's ever seen one. Oh, I know people have brought back stories about these semi-humans. No, oh, the whole thing sounds fantastic. Brother say, it is still Tara. I'm sorry, Sobra. Have your brother and his men join us if they want to, but we have other work to do. I didn't run. Be quick. 